Okay, this video is going to explain how to do uh, the diffusion and osmosis practice problems that you see in this packet that I emailed you. It's also in your lab packet. You will have two problems like this on the quiz coming up, so it's really important you understand what to do. Now, the first thing you need to do when you see these problems is to read the directions and make sure you see a couple of things up top. It says, assume that the membrane is permeable to glucose, K+, plus, Na+, plus, and then they list a whole bunch of stuff. The word permeable means that those things can go through. Okay, so the membrane is permeable to all of these molecules, and they can move through the membrane easily. Okay, it also says, assume that the membrane is impermeable to starch and the substance Y. Impermeable means that these things cannot go through. It's important to always read these directions because you're going to be referring back to them often as you do the problems. Okay, so now when we go look at problem number one, okay, the first step is always to figure out the percent of water inside and outside the cell. Okay, so I'm going to fill it in H2O inside and outside. Now, to figure out the percent of water inside the cell, the percentages need to add up to 100. So if I already have 10% glucose, to get to 100, I need 90% water. On the outside of the cell, if I have 90% glucose, to get to 100, that means I have 10% water. Okay, That's always going to be the first step. Fill in the percent of water. It's also usually going to be the first question. So problem number one says, what is the percent water inside the cell? We already figured out that was 90% and outside the cell is 10%. Okay, the next question says, will osmosis occur? Okay, you should have already gone through the notes at this point, the cell transport notes, and so you should know that osmosis is the diffusion of water. Okay, so we're looking at specifically water here you need to ask yourself two questions. And the first question is, is the membrane permeable to water? Yes, it is. All right, so water will go through. The second question you need to ask yourself is, do we have a high and a low of water? Do we have a high number in one place and a low number in another place? And the answer is yes. Okay, so because we answered yes to both of those questions, we're going to put yes on the line. Then the question says, if so, in what direction? Water, and really anything that diffuses, is always going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. That's the definition of diffusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil, put it on the high number, and draw an arrow towards the low number. All right, and that's going to tell us which way water is going to move. We drew the arrow out of this cell, so that's the answer. And you write out of the cell. You cannot just write out or in, because I don't know if you mean out of the cell or out of the beaker and into the cell. Do you see the difference? So always give me the cell as a reference point. Okay. The next question says, will glucose diffuse? Again, check the directions, is the membrane permeable to glucose? Yes, it is. All right. Next question, do we have a high and a low of glucose? 90 versus 10, yes, we do. Therefore, we can write yes on the line. Glucose will diffuse. Okay. Remember, we're moving from high to low, so we put our pencil on the high number 90%, draw the arrow towards the low number of 10%, so glucose is going to move into the cell. Okay, all right. Number four says, will the cell shrink or swell? Okay, you need to make sure that you're looking at what water is doing. All right. Which way is water moving? And that's going to help you answer this question. Okay, now remember, we drew these arrows over here, so we know that water is moving out of the cell. Because of that, this is going to make the cell shrink. How do you know? We just said water 
is leaving the cell. Okay. All right, the last question asks, label the solution in the beaker as hypo, hyper, or isotonic. Now, these were in your notes. Isotonic means that we have the same percentage inside and out. So if we look at water, do we have the same percentage, 90 and 10? No, we don't. So we can cross isotonic right off the list, okay? Now, hypotonic, okay, a good way to remember this, the root hypo, if you look at this, it's going to be a good way to, to remember this. You're going to think high and O for outside, all right? So is the concentration of water higher outside the cell than inside? And if we look, no, it's not. It's only 10%. That is lower, okay? So that means we're going to cross out hypotonic. The answer is hypertonic. All right, because we have a higher concentration of water inside the cell than outside. So this is a hypertonic solution, okay? This is one of the most basic problems you're going to see. They're just going to get a little bit more complex as we go, but this is like the basic level, okay? You will then continue on and do problems two as well as three, four, five, and six, okay? So try those out, let's see how you do, and we will go over these in class next time.